What's going on everybody? It's Ollie from Flight Comp back again and today we're going to do a repair. This is a boom from a Vertigo a F5J model. It's a very lightweight carbon fiber part. And I apologize for the crappy lighting but you could probably see we have a crack almost all the way around the boom here. Um, one major one here, some damage here, and there's even some damage right here. And this side looks to be okay. Um, so, this belongs to a friend of mine, and he stepped on it, actually. This is his own model, and he, uh, he stepped on it. And the funny thing is, a few weeks later, he stepped on a center panel of his. And even funnier is last year he stepped on my Infinity. So he might enjoy stepping on models more than flying, but you know, everyone's got to have a hobby. And let's see if we can try to, let's see if we can fix this. And again, I'm gonna try to fix it in a way that um, requires minimal finish and sanding work. Um, basically, I'm just kind of trying to repair it and make it look as good as I can without sanding or polishing on it or anything. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is um, tack the big cracks back together with super glue or CA. Then I might have to sand it down a little bit. And then we're going to move on to, um, you know, putting carbon on it and getting it fixed up. I thought I'd go ahead and weigh this before we did the repair, that way we can see how much weight we've added. Uh, as you can see, it's 86 grams, or 87, 86, 87, something like that. And then when we're done, we can weigh it and see how much we've added to it. Okay, we have CA, sort of smeared all over the place, tacking the parts together, and that's dry. And now what I'm going to do is sand the part in the general area of the repair to try to get as smooth and uniform surface as possible. Okay, we've sanded the repair area. I used 220 grit sandpaper and basically scuffed up this whole area in between the masking tape just to level everything out. And I went over it with a rag and uh, rubbing alcohol to clean up all the... Uh, particles and stuff off of it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and prep the materials I'm gonna to use to make the repair. All right, I got my materials cut out. I have some unidirectional carbon here, some very lightweight spread toe, and some heavier spread toe here, like the checkerboard pattern. This is gonna be the last piece. These two pieces are gonna go on first. And then I've just lightly misted on some 3M77, uh, you know, like contact spray adhesive. And I'm going to basically gently place the pieces of carbon. I will do these small pieces first. And then I'll probably put a very light mist on that again of the 3M77. And then I'll place uh, the bigger piece, the outer piece of carbon on. This is a piece of PVC shrink tubing. Uh, I got this on Amazon. It like opens up, um, and the plan is to put it over the repair once you get the epoxy on there, and use it to uh, clamp down on the uh, the repair area and try to leave a somewhat decent finish. Um, the first thing I want to do is. Just see if this will shrink down small enough. Because I know it'll go over the boom, the back part of the boom. But I just want to hit this with a heat gun and see if it'll shrink down small enough. And I think it's definitely going to shrink small enough to be good for uh, our repair. Um, if you're going to try this kind of repair with shrink tubing, make sure you get PVC. Don't get the polyvinyl shrink tubing, which is kind of a rubbery looking and feeling shrink tubing. Um, that'll stick to epoxy. This stuff here won't. So this is way more uh, rigid and like plasticky feeling. 
than the other shrink tubing. So the next thing to do is mix up some epoxy. Okay, I have totally overly saturated this with epoxy. There's way too much epoxy on here. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is wrap some paper towel around this and hold it in place with masking tape. And then I'm going to um, put that shrink tubing on. Okay, so here's what it looks like with the shrink uh, wrap on here. Um, I'm gonna let this paper towel soak up as much resin as possible for a few minutes and then I'm going to cut the uh, shrink wrap off and then put a new piece of shrink wrap on and hopefully that'll be it and we can just wait for it to cure. Alright, I removed the uh, paper towel and the other piece of shrink tubing and now I have a new piece of shrink tubing on here and let's try to shrink it down and see what happens. Alright, here's what it looks like with the shrink wrap on there. And it did a pretty good job of clamping down tight on the carbon. It's better lighting right here. So, we'll just wait for this to dry overnight, or maybe even a day or two. And then we'll try peeling that shrink tubing off, and we'll see what the result is. The epoxy is cured. It feels really strong actually, so um, next thing I'm going to do is attempt to try to get the shrink wrap off. I just made a cut in here with an uh, X-Acto knife and this is peeling off the epoxy and carbon beautifully. It hasn't stuck at all. You could just kind of peel it like an apple skin, basically. So let me go ahead and finish getting all this off here. Okay, there it is, all finished. And this is feeling really strong. It's a pretty shiny finish. It's a little lumpy and bumpy just because we have various different layers of carbon on the repair and um, the, the the layers create you know bumps and also there was a few voids and things in the brakes so that created some divots um, basically so the more uniform your surfaces that you're starting with and the more uniform your layers are the better the outcome but it produced a very nice finish there are some voids because we sucked a lot of the epoxy out of here before we you know, finalize the repair because we're trying to keep it lightweight. But I actually think I could have uh, maybe taken even more epoxy out of this because it seems to be saturated pretty well. So let me just go ahead and weigh this and see how much weight we've added to this boom with the repair. Well, my scale says 87 grams. I know this isn't the most accurate scale in the world, and we started out with 86. So according to this cheapo scale, we only added a gram. Um, you know, maybe it's, it could have been two grams. Um, unfortunately, it's the worst place to add the weight all the way at the at the tail. You know, because to keep the proper CG, you might have to add five grams in the nose or something. But that'll I'll leave that up to my buddy to um, to balance it out and see where it ends up. But but wow, that was a that was a really easy way to make a nice repair. So you know, guys. Um, if you have a boom or something round like this where you can put a piece of shrink tubing over, um, this would be a really great method for making a repair. Okay, really quick, I'll go over some of the um, materials I used in this repair. Um, first thing is we have this uh, shrink tubing. It's a, a PVC shrink tubing, as I mentioned before. Got this off Amazon. I'll try to leave links. You can get it in various... Um, widths or diameters for whatever you're repairing. Um, I use carbon, but you could also use fiberglass or Kevlar just as easily. Um, I'm using uh, Aero Epoxy from Aircraft Spruce, a really slow curing high quality epoxy. I also recommend uh, MGS um, epoxy. These epoxies are basically only available in gallon kits, um, so they're pretty expensive. 
but if you're going to be doing a lot of modeling um, and composite repairs or composite fabrication, well worth it. Just keep them stored in a um, cool, dry environment. And I usually pour off smaller amounts into containers like this to use on my workbench and then leave the big gallon kit sealed up um, somewhere dry and cool. And then I'm using just popsicle sticks and I actually got like a box of, I don't know, a thousand or ten thousand of these popsicle sticks on Amazon. Um, it was dirt cheap and much cheaper than buying them from like a online hobby retailer. And then these mixing cups I get from Smart and Final, which is like a restaurant supply and grocery store kind of place. Um, if you live somewhere that doesn't have a Smart and Final, you can look into restaurant supply. Um, these are what you'd get like sauces in or something in a restaurant or salsa. You can get, I got a sleeve of these um, for a couple of bucks. It's probably a hundred of these in a sleeve. Again, much cheaper than buying the mixing cups from a, a hobby retailer. And then just some paper towel, and that's basically it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, again, I always look for uh, quick and new ways of uh, making repairs, and this worked out really well. So hopefully it will be useful to some of you guys in the future. And thanks so much for watching. And again, if you like the totally half-ass amateur videos I make, <laughs> Consider subscribing. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.